us, it's Confidential. Um, we're again filming in London and today I've come to meet Anastasia Bacchiani, who's actually going to be doing some interviews for Classics Confidential over the coming months. Um, but we thought that you know, before you see her interview other people, it would be nice to know a bit about her own work. So um, we're going to talk about your, your book, your latest book, yes. um, Electra, Ancient and Modern. Um, do you want to give the whole title? Because it's got a subtitle as well, hasn't um, it? Yeah, so we, we have a, a very long subtitle. Um, it's Aspects of the Reception of the Tragic Heroine. Uh, but basically it's about the tragic heroine Electra in the modern world, uh, starting from the 18th century uh, and uh, into the 20th. Um, and maybe for, for people who are unfamiliar with the myth of Electra, could you give a brief synopsis of like, who she was? Um, of course. Um, Electra is the daughter of Agamemnon and Clytemnestra. Um, Clytemnestra, very famous in antiquity, one of the bad women, mm. uh, who killed her husband Agamemnon when he mm. came back from Troy. Um, Electra was their daughter who um, sided with her father and her brother Orestes um, and uh, she desired her mother's punishment mm. even if that meant matricide so mm. she was a bit transgressive mm -hmm. herself. And what are the main texts that we, you know, the, the ancient texts about Electra? Uh, we are actually very fortunate in that we have um, Electra plays by all three great tragedians. So we have Aeschylus's Choephori, uh, we have Sophocles's Electra and Euripides's Electra, uh, plus she's a protagonist in um, Euripides's Orestes. Uh, so there's lots of Electra. Loads of ancient uh, source material. And uh, do the ancient tragedians, do they differ quite a lot in their representation? Um, of they do, they do. Um, I think um, Aeschylus presents us with a more traditional version of Electra. Uh, her job in the play is basically to support her brother. And before anything really much happens, she disappears from the stage. Uh, there's a bit of, you know, debate about exactly when she leaves, but she's definitely not involved in the carrying out of the revenge. When you say a traditional Electra, does that mean that there was a long tradition of the myths of Electra before that, that um, Aeschylus himself was drawing on? Actually, it's quite interesting that Electra doesn't figure a lot before the tragedians. It's really in tragedy that she comes into her own, yeah. um, which is, is quite interesting. Um, but I think it, she's traditional in that she is more the sort of the dutiful daughter and sister and less the transgressive heroine who desires her mother's death. Right. Um, I think she comes uh, quite close to that in the Comos, the long prayer with her brother Orestes. Right. Um, but it, she definitely doesn't go as far as she does in Sophocles right. and indeed in Euripides where her hand is on the sword um, that kills her mother. So, um, and is that thought to be an innovation of Sophocles and Euripides? Uh, yes, yes. I mean, there's again, there's a lot of argument about the dates so of who came first, Sophocles' Electra or um, Euripides' version. Um, but I mean, I think they're both um, quite innovative and they're both playing off Aeschylus' mm. Um, uh, famous uh, play which is part of the Orisai of course, mm. the mm. most famous trilogy and the only surviving one from the ancient world. But um, in your book you're particularly interested in how later sort of 18th mm. to 20th century um, I mean I, I want to say artists but actually you, you need to study a range of receptions don't you? I do but I am particularly interested in um, visual receptions okay. um, which includes obviously art from mm. the 18th the 19th century, there's some amazing paintings and drawings of Electra, um, but also from cinema, mm -hmm. which is moving pictures. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so yes, I'm really quite interested in the visual aspect. And of course, visual spectacle is something that we know from ancient commentators that mm. um, the um, ancient Greeks laughed about yeah. Greek theatre. Um, so, w when the you look at the um, the visual appearance of Electra, does she does she change a lot between these different receptions? You know, does she get sort of older and younger, or wear different things? Um, yes, that's that's very true. I think she's often portrayed uh, quite simply dressed because she's 
meant to be in mourning. Uh, sometimes with uh, shorn hair, as was mm. traditional um, for mourning practices from the ancient world. Um, and um, what changes, I think, is more her portrayal. Um, in the 18th and 19th century, she's quite demure. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's all about how dutiful she is and her relationship with her brother. Uh, so if you like, it's um, the better aspects of her character. And her desire to be involved in the plan to kill her mother, Clytemnestra, in revenge for what she uh, did to um, her father is kind of silenced. It's left out in of the, the narrative. In the 18th and 19th century yes. portrayals. And then I actually remember from reading your book that that's something that comes up um, much more in, sort of in 20th century, yes. particularly the, the yeah. filmic perceptions. Yes. Um, I think it's a development that arose out of Freud's popularity. Um, suddenly people were a lot more interested in the relationship within the family. So um, the... Um, family of uh, Electra becomes much more the focus. Um, so the, her forbidden desires, if you like, um, come back to life. Because Freud century. talks himself about Electra, right? Um, actually, uh, it's more Jung who, oh. who came up with the um, Electra aspect oh, of things. Right. Um, Freud obviously very famously um, used Oedipus yes. as a metaphor, um, but it was Jung who sort of added the um, Electra aspect, uh. which is quite interesting. Uh, what did he say about Electra? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's basically the uh, equivalent of the uh, Oedipus complex, like the Electra complex, the fact that she yeah. sides, you know, with her father and um, her brother taking the male yeah. uh, side uh, against her mother, Clytemnestra. Um, so that aspect has really come to the fore, I think, in the 20th century and in the 21st. Um, I recently saw a production where that was really the dominant element of the story. It was all about the family and all the um, aspects of the community that we are um, used to in Greek tragedy seem to sort of disappear, really. Um, which I thought was very interesting. Yeah. What, what got you interested in a lecture in the first place? Um, I have to say, it, for me too, it was um, that very interesting f um, family dynamic. Mm. Um, you know, I thought, wow, a, a daughter who desires her mother's death. How, mm. how exciting. <laughs> 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 Perhaps for the wrong reasons. <laughs> um, but mm. I, I just I thought it's such an interesting story. Um, also, of course, the fact that we have so many um, dramatic texts that yeah. feature Electra gives me more material to, to play mm. with. And also, it's interesting in terms of her reception that um, later artists have chosen particular plays or even drawn different elements from all three plays to construct mm. their own Electra. Uh, so that provides me with a very interesting commentary on the um, ancient texts themselves. Yes. Um, it's really all about the dialogue between ancient and modern. Sure. So do you think, I mean, it sounds, it's such a rich myth and a rich reception of history. Do you think you'll carry on working on Electra now or have you got other plans? Um, well, uh, I keep saying I will stop working on Electra yeah. and then I keep seeing interesting <laughs> receptions that oh. I want to work on. Um, so um, I am developing my interest in modern Greek receptions um, in particular, but I'm sure I'll always go back to Electra. You always have a <laughs> special space in your heart for Electra. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> well, it's great to hear about your work and looking forward to seeing more of you on the channel <laughs> and talking to other, other people, other of our colleagues. Um, but yeah, thanks very much for telling us about your book. Thank you, Jess.